I think the prevailing feeling uh, in the country is one of, of, of pessimism. And you hear the words failing state, banana republic, another Zimbabwe virtually every day. And I think we've, we've talked ourselves into that de depression. We stopped understanding what was going on in our society. We stopped um, distinguishing between what is not so good and what is like really awful. What is, what is deplorable and what is terrible? What is, po what is possibly going to go wrong and, and what will never go wrong? And that, so we just sit here with the headline, overwhelmed by the headlines and the television visuals of violence and rhetoric, and, and we watch too much Facebook and Twitter, and then so we sit there paralyzed. And my point actually is that this is the magical moment. We have now, in the last month or two, especially with the student uprising, the fees must fall in its, in its first half, we've reached a point where the ANC has lost its, its stranglehold over all of society. And, and this is not necessarily an anti-ANC statement, it's merely saying, in a democracy, in an open society like ours, a one-party dom dominant democracy doesn't really work. So we had to do that. We had to say to the ANC, so you are not going to rule until Jesus comes back. You are just another political party and six out of ten people have voted for you. They might not do that again. But the students have said, and they went to Parliament and they went to the Chuli House and they went to the Union Building and said, we don't care about your struggle. We don't care about your exile. You're messing up our country and we don't want to know who, what parties you support, we're saying this is not good. The way that you've been treating your citizens is not good. So suddenly you sit with a lot of instability, insecurity, um, and that's a precondition for change. If everything is locked down and stagnant, then new ideas, new energy cannot come uh, to the surface. And we are there now. The old order, the post-1994 order is dead. It's dead. Virtually everybody is unhappy in the society. Black people are angry that things have not changed enough. White people are scared and confused. Nobody's happy. How come? We've done this before. We, we come from, a, from 350 years of extreme oppression and dispossession and then it came to the surface and we dealt with it. Uh, now we have all these building blocks, open society, constitution, we got to know each other, we got uh, uh, um, people in the civil service and in government who have learned over 20 years how to do it. We, black and white, get on extremely well in the workplace, in the suburbs, in the sport field. So suddenly we have so much more going for us. If only we, we realize we have to redesign this model. The model the new South Africa Model 1, the wheels came off. We can't put the wheels back on. We have to design new South Africa, democratic South Africa, Model 2. And that's where we are right now. And we know what we did wrong. Um, civil society has suddenly become very strong. So we don't even need strong leaders like we did in 94, in 1990. Because with the students and other movements, um, suddenly with as the leadership waned, the active citizen citizenry became stronger. And that's really who we are, because essentially, South Africa has become one of the most open societies in the world. And nobody is gonna close that society down, rob us of our freedoms again. Now, an open society is a dangerous thing for a politician. We don't take their nonsense anymore. Um, an open society also is, there's n not a single example in history of an um, open society that suddenly became a failed state. So it's a, it's a fantastic opportunity, it's a, it's a time of uh, great opportunity that we need to get energetic, citizens should form a critical mass and say here we are, um, we recognize that we an unequal society and it's unsustainable. We have to do something radical to redistribute without 
killing the economy. That's the trick we're going to find out now. How do we redesign the society without killing the economy? How do we redistribute, help the poor, make the economy look different without scrapping the property clause in the Constitution? And I think it's all possible. And maybe we will have to wait for the present president to go away first, but that can't be too long. Um, and I'm excited to be a part of this process.